Hi everyone, uh, this is Ira Fay, and I thought it might be nice to do a video analyzing the special blue and red tiles for the climb up Mount Doom. And I have created a simulator, it's available to everyone. Um, the URL is irafay.com slash w-o-t-r underscore mordor dot php and you can play around with it. There are a bunch of different settings. I've put some sample settings in here so we can try and analyze it in some way. So what what I should notice, what I should note is the current step is one, so we're starting at the beginning of the track. Eye damage we're assuming is three. So this is obviously variable, but we want the simulator to have some value. So I've chosen three, I feel like that's probably a reasonable guess. This golem value is how many damaging tiles the fellowship has to experience before golem becomes active. And then this is the current hunt pool. So I have one of each tile plus four eyes. And that assumes, I think, seven tiles drawn on the way to Mordor. Maybe that's a little aggressive maybe i don't know exactly how what you find in your games what a reasonable number of tiles to be drawn is before the fellowship declares in mordor i picked i picked seven so one of the zeros two of the ones one of the twos two of the threes and this is just sort of the basic setup and we're running the simulation ten thousand times and you can see that the the character dice that we would expect the fellowship to need to take is about seven and a half character dice to move all the way up mordor which makes sense because um all the way up mount doom because about half of these tiles are are reveals um and maybe we're going to get golem and so maybe some of these will turn into not being reveals and so we need, and it doesn't matter if we're revealed on the very last step. So that's why roughly seven and a half character dice, you can see about 2.8 reveals and a total of 10.5 corruption. Obviously the eyes are going to vary and this does not use Gollum's ability. So I just don't have that checked. So this is just sort of a baseline. I wanted to pick some sort of baseline without, this assumes you have no red and no blue tiles in the pool. This is about what you get. So I wanted to see, okay, well, what happens if we add the best blue tile if we add the, the negative two, the file of Galadriel. And what you notice is, I'm just gonna switch back and forth here for a little bit. This is back to the baseline. So look at the character dice. This is a baseline 7.4, and this is with the file 7.2. So not a big difference in terms of the number of character dice you need. And that's also because the number of reveals does not change a lot, 2.8 to 2.5. It goes down a little bit, but not very much. The thing that I want you to notice is the corruption. So the corruption jumps almost by two. We go from 10.5 on average to 8.7 on average. And the reason why, just to think about the math for a second, is the average of these existing tiles in the hunt pool, not counting the negative two, but the average of these tiles is around two because you have zero plus one plus one plus two plus two plus three, and then all of these eyes are threes, so four times three. You take all of that and then you divide by the number of tiles to get the average. To get the average, you just add everything up and then divide by the number of things you added together. So in this case, we're dividing by 10, and if you average that out, it's about two. So the average corruption damage of this hunt pool that we've sort of selected is two, and then if you add this negative two to it, the, the statistics, given that there, there are 10 tiles in here, now this makes the 11th tile. If we're drawing the tiles, five tiles out of this bag, about half the time, a little, I think a little less than half the time, we're going to get this negative two. And so half the time we're going from an average of two to negative two. That's a difference. That's a swing of four corruption, but we're only hitting it half the time. And so that's why when you take 10,000 trials and you average them all out, we get about a difference of um, from 10.5 10 to about um, eight, a little more than eight and a half. So, so that's roughly the math. I think this simulator is working properly. I mean, there could be bugs in this, but, but I think it's about right. And I think that's useful to know. It's sort of intuitive. Okay, well, I put a negative two in and that's why it goes down by two. But actually what's happening is it's a difference of positive two to negative two, but you're only hitting it half the time. So 
that's, that's something to think about because half the time it's not going to make any difference at all. And half the time it's going to make a swing of four. So that's, that's, that's pretty big. It's not exactly just a flat two. So, okay. Um, and, and I think actually just to think about the strategy for a second, that's actually a good thing because there are going to be plenty of games where a difference of two corruption won't make or break you, but the difference of four corruption really could make a difference in the outcome of the game. All right. So let's look at what happens if we go, here's the baseline again. And then this is if instead of adding the negative two, we add the I stop the red tile. And you can see that the character dice needed goes from 7.4 to 8.2. We've increased that by, by 0.8, almost a full extra die that the fellowship's going to need to make it up the, um, to Mount Doom. The reveals goes up a little bit and the corruption goes up from 10 and a half to almost 12. So almost one and a half extra corruption. And, um, I guess that means that's an extra, a whole extra tile that you're getting out of it. So that's why I think half the time you're getting an extra tile and that extra tile is about two. So, so I guess I would expect that to have only gone up by one because half of the time I'm going to need an extra tile. But I think it also, since this is an eye that also increased the average a little bit, um, and I guess this is a little less than it didn't really go up by one and a half. It went up by 1.4. So, so I don't know exactly what that means, how you should be thinking about that. If I want to increase the fellowship and how long it's going to take them, you know, I just, by putting, by playing this, I stop in putting it in the pool. If the pool has 10 tiles in it starting with, then I'm going to increase their corruption by maybe about one and a half. And I'm causing them almost to spend one extra die. Is that worth it for me to spend a, a card and a die to cost them an extra die and a little corruption? You know, um, a lot of times I'll play a card that just does one corruption and feel fine about it. So this is not only causing them a corruption or maybe a little more, but also costing them a die. So that's, that's probably a good, that's probably a good investment. Most of the time, obviously, if this pool is even bigger, then it has less of an impact. So, so that's something to think about. All right, let's take a look at what if we add everything in. So this is a situation where we have all of the blue tiles and all of the red tiles, and let's compare it to the baseline. So this is the baseline. Um, and this is if we add every, all of the red and all of the blue tiles, I just wanted to give some examples. So if you notice the, this is the, this baseline, let's look at the character dice needed baseline, 7.4, 8.6 with everything in. So the number of character dice needed goes up by a, a lot because we're hitting those stop tiles. So that's what's going on. But our total average number of reveals does not go up by that much. And in fact, it, it, it even goes down slightly because the pool overall is, has fewer reveals in it. Now, of course, we might need to reveal ourselves using Gollum's ability um, if the corruption spikes, but you can see the corruption on average, remember on average, it actually goes down a little bit. This is the baseline 10 and a half, uh, and this is, the, this is the average with all the tiles in it. So it goes down a little bit in this case with these pools. Obviously there are a lot of permutations. You can explore it a bit for yourself. And then the last permutation that I wanted to add for this baseline example is what if we go from this, this exact same situation with all of the tiles in it and also add mithril coat and sting. So this is with mithril coat and sting. And you can see this is, this is the baseline with everything in this is mithril coat and sting. Um, you can see the character dice drop by almost a full and the corruption goes down by about one and a half and the rules, obviously the logic for mithril coat and sting can vary and what's strategic and best for you and your situation obviously varies a lot. This simulation has mithril coat and sting only used if you draw a red tile. The first time you draw a red tile, mithril coat and sting is used and otherwise it's not used at all. So, you know, I, that logic I think could be more subtle. There are obviously a lot of factors involved in when to use it, but that's, that's what this simulation has. It's obviously a model. It's a simplification, but Okay, so that's hopefully useful to give you a sense of what the tiles might be worth in maybe a baseline case. Maybe this is overly optimistic for how useful they'll be if you feel like there are often not seven tiles drawn before you get to Mordor. Then, then this is overly optimistic. They will have even less impact than what I've just described. 
Now, what if we consider a situation where the hunt was crazy, getting to Mordor, Gollum, you already have Gollum when you're starting up Mordor, and the only thing we have left is a single zero, a single one, and a single two, and then four eyes. So this, I picked this because the baseline is pretty close to the other baseline. So th I'm just going to compare baselines. This is 7.4 character dice, and this is 7.3. So th these are basically the same. The corruption is slightly higher on average with this starting setup. Again, eyes on average are going to be worth three. So, but roughly these two baselines are the same with the exception that just the pool is smaller. We have three fewer tiles in the pool. It was a brutal hunt getting to Mordor. We hit a bunch of strongholds. We got a bunch of tiles that got drawn extra that were from, you know, Orc Patrol or something like that. So here we go. This is, we're going to add the file to it and see what happens. You can see it go down. So corruption goes from 10.7 to 8.1. So this is the baseline. This is the... Um, with, with the file in it. And, and let's think about what the average of this is. This is zero plus one plus two. That's, um, that's three, obviously. And then the I tiles, four times three is 12. So that's 15. On average, we have to divide this by seven. 15 divided, 15 divided by seven is a little more than two. So on average, this hunt pool is about the same. So the reason why we're seeing more of a difference here is not because the hunt pool was, was so much more brutal and therefore the relative average of getting a normal average hunt tile compared to the negative two is, is bigger. What's happening here, the reason why we can explain this as being a bigger differential is the reason why we might expect, which is just there are fewer tiles in the pool and therefore we're just that much more likely to draw this negative two. So... Let's compare this baseline to, now we're gonna add the, the I stop, the red tile and see what happens. You can see we went from 7.3 character dice needed on average to uh, 8.5, so more than one die. We're costing the fellowship more than one die and the corruption is going from 10.7 to 12.6, almost two, two full corruption. So, and obviously, if eyes are worth more or less, depending on the time you draw, then that will have an impact. But, um, you know, this is basically, I, I think, intuitively what we would expect. But often when I'm, you know, thinking about the value of a card as shadow, I'm thinking, well, how much am I going to expect to do? You know, if I, am I going to play Candles of Corpses that, you know, on average is going to do 1.5 corruption? Is that, is that worth it? And often I, assuming Gollum is not guide, often I will play that and it'll do, you know, so on average 1.5 corruption. So thinking about how the value of these red tiles is, is useful. It really varies depending on the size of the hunt pool. So that's, that's what you, I think we should be thinking about. Um, how big do we expect the hunt pool to be by the time we get to Mordor? That's that's going to be one a major factor in the the value of these red and blue tiles. So this is an example of that um, small starting pool, but with all of the tiles uh, compared to the baseline, the the corruption again goes down a bit, um, but the character dice needed uh, goes up by almost 1.7. 1, 1. So almost two extra character dice because we're just hitting those red tiles, you know, almost guaranteed. And we can look at the, what happens if we add for, to this example, to add mithril, you can see we save a character die and we save the corruption by, what is that? That's about 1.8. We're saving 1.8 corruption and one character die. And what's interesting about that is, so, so that was 1.8 corruption and one character die. Compare that to the mithril example in, in the other baseline, in a bigger hunt pool, we save a little less, a little less than one character die. So that's, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure why that's happening. I guess, I guess it, increases by avoiding the red tile we're that much more likely to draw a blue tile so i guess that's i guess that's what's happening here i'm not i'm not exactly sure why we would see more of a difference with mithril with a smaller pool 
yeah, I guess it's just you're, you're that much more likely to get, get one of the good tiles because the pool is smaller. So I hope that you, I hope this has been useful for you. Um, I don't, I don't think there's anything really mind blowing here. Um, you sort of know that the red and blue tiles are good, but trying to quantify it, I think can be useful and thinking about how much of an impact it will be. And, and I also think just keeping in mind that the, the size of the hunt pool is going to be a, a pretty major factor in the impact of these tiles. So I hope you can play around with it. Um, the, I'll include the URL to this simulator in, in the link below the video. And if you have any suggestions for other games or other topics you want me to cover, um, I welcome it. If you have any, um, you know, fun stories about drawing red or blue tiles or, or any additional thoughts, please, please share them in the comments below. Thanks so much.